58, I think, but it's 2248. The numbers. Oh yeah. So it's sweet. Right. They said, "Oh yeah, we found it." So they bagged it up and sent it. It's like, <laughs> well, this Thank is all. You. This is my main fish cutting knife. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, you need a longer blade. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I'll, what I'll do is I'll talk my way through the fish here. Oh, totally. And yeah. and uh, then if you want to start the other one, that's cool too. Yeah. And if you go on, maybe not. That's okay too. I'll I I'd it. love. I want to try. And, yeah, for sure. And maybe yeah. somebody, maybe one of the audience will be doing it too. That would, would be cool. Yeah. But. All right. I think we're good to go. You guys can hear me okay? Yeah, you bet, Harley. Yeah. Thanks. Awesome. Awesome. Well, welcome everyone. Um, my name is Harley K. MacArthur, and I'm going to be hosting today. I'm from White Bear First Nation in Southeast Saskatchewan. I'm Cree and Assiniboine on my dad's side and European ancestry on my mom's side. And so welcome to the Promoting Resiliency uh, webinar series. This is a collaboration between the Cape Wellness team and First Nations Health Authority Respecting Tobacco Program. And the theme of this whole series is grounding our health in indigenous ways of self-care. And so in the creation of this series, we wanted to focus on sharing indigenous ways of supporting our well-being during the COVID-19 pandemic, but also beyond that. And so this is our third one. Um, and my biggest takeaway from the first two has been that indigenous knowledge and ways of being are not new ways. They're simple and they're what indigenous people have been doing forever. And so in this series, we've had the opportunity to talk about food as medicine. We will be talking about traditional medicine, physical activity, and these are all, these are all good medicine. Um, but I just wanted to emphasize that hearing from knowledge keepers and hearing about participants' stories of food they've ate, memories they've have of fishing or harvesting with their family, all of these stories have also been good medicine. And so today's workshop is with Daniel Elliott and Jesse Smith, and they're going to teach us step by step how to fillet and can salmon with a pressure canner. Um, so if you're using Zoom, I have shared a link to uh, a supply list. Um, and I've also shared a link for the First Nations Health Authority canning foods guides. And if you're watching on Facebook, um, <laughs> we will make sure that these are shared on our Facebook page as well. I did just wanna go over uh, some Zoom etiquette. So first things, please keep your mics muted throughout this, um, throughout this webinar. If you do have any questions, please ask them in the chat function on Zoom or on Facebook. And I will be sharing your questions with Daniel and Jesse throughout the webinar. And third, this webinar is being recorded. So if you do choose to ask questions, just know that it will be recorded and is being live streamed on Facebook. One last thing, um, with any programming, we want to make sure that what we're doing is meaningful. It's what you want to see. And it's also fulfilling the purpose that we set out to do. So it would mean a lot if you could at the end, just take a couple minutes to fill out our survey and I will make sure that it's posted to our chat on Zoom and also uh, on Facebook for you to fill out. And that's all for me for right now. So I will hand it over to Daniel and Jesse to introduce themselves and then we can get into the webinar. Hi, Sapka CM. Queet CM, Queet Tatitas. Thank you, honored people that are uh, on this wonderful program. I'm excited to be here with Jesse and myself. I'm a Staminas uh, band member and we're in the Staminas Health Center and I'm honored that we have a chance to, to do a few things today for you. And some of this stuff is just natural. It comes for some people have done this since babies. And then there's also been some interruptions and part of that is around colonization. So this is actually decolonizing when we learn how to handle our fish when we learn how to can. And so it feels good when people uh, eat your 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 jarred fish and they say it doesn't taste like anything I've ever eaten. So 
I'm really honored to be here today. So we're going to cut up some fish today. And it's formerly, I mean, I'm a NADAP worker, uh, which is National or Native Alcohol and Drug Prevention Worker here. But for 27 years, I was a commercial fisher. So I, anything to do with fish and salmon and uh, I love it. And to, to embody and connect it to our culture, it's wonderful. So uh, we're going to be doing uh, some, some and, and Jesse said she wants to learn how to do uh, some playing and Sometimes that's intimidating, but um, you know what? If we, if you got a sharp knife, and you, and you keep your flanges, you know it's okay. You learn how to do it. So what do you think? And so Jesse, you can introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Jesse Smith. I'm Ojibwe from Hemby Inlet in Southern Ontario. I I grew up in Nanaimo with my mother and siblings. Uh, I work for First Nations Health Authority as an environmental health technician primarily working with the drinking water safety program. So I'm very excited uh, to, to learn with you, learn how to fillet a fish and, and all about pressure canning uh, while sharing maybe some info about food safety. Cool, thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Jesse. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, before we start, it's, uh, part of what this is about is for eons, I've seen it on boats of decks where people use uh, water bath systems and they've worked for a lot of people, but there's been some instances where some of the bacteria can't be uh, canned out because of course, you know, water's only 212 or 100 Celsius. And with our pressure cooker, we can go up to, you know, 240 degrees or whatever that is, 10 pounds. And what happens is that it, it, it sterilizes those parts. So it takes that element away. So water bathing, yeah, it worked and it works for some people. And sometimes if you don't do it right, I know my wife was talking to me and she said, she remembers the time we were on the boat and I, I forgot about it, but the oil stove on the boat couldn't get the water boiling and she had it on there for hours. And we ended up having to throw all the fish out because we couldn't get the water even to boil. So pressure cooking is, it's safe and it's the really good way to do it. So before we um, talk about pressure canning, we gotta learn how to handle our fish. And today, um, our, um, we actually have two sockeye today, which they were glazed frozen from last year and they use sugar and salt and they they freeze them in the dipping glaze and it's like they're they're in this uh, cocoon that they don't um so these fish are you know they're, they're they the frost is very fresh this is a sockeye you can see it's got no spots on it and sometimes when you're handling fish too and you're not sure if you get a fish and you're going well geez because when you're canning it only keeps the fish as good as what you have right here so if you have super fresh fish and it's great, but if you have a fish that's turning, uh, it's not gonna make it better by canning it. So you have to be, and so some of that is, uh, like this one was in water all night, but you smell the gills and it's, it's good. Mm -hmm. And the gills, because of the blood in there, it, it, it turns uh, the fish uh, fast. And then there's also a protective layer that these guys have to, keep themselves from disease and it's it's the slime the fish slime on there so when we're going to cut them up we're going to have that slime we don't want to jar that so we're going to take mm -hmm. them back and wash them okay so for me because i'm left-handed and i had to learn because everybody in my house and all my teachers were right-handed and i was like yeah but i'm left-handed so it's it's going to be a little hard for you to see a left-handed person cut fish but it's right to me Using my left hand. <laughs> so, I'm right-handed. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so I take um, I take the fish and just under the fin, I take a, a slice, and I, I go underneath the gill plate here just because there's lots of great meat in there and I don't want to waste too much. And down the backbone, the backbone goes like this around the salmon. So, some people do a straight cut, but I do about an inch. Um, I do about an inch, uh, about that much of the blade. And so I'm just kind of going past. So if you look, there's, um, you can see, I just kind of got close to the backbone. Mm -hmm. And, and so I'm to the right of the, the backbone. 
so then I so I know I'm hitting a, a, a set of um, bones in here because I know some people they can the whole thing and it's okay uh, so I'm just running my knife right along so I end up running right along the bones and I hear my knife kind of running hitting the bones mm -hmm. and some of them you can see where I took too much and the bones are in there and that's okay um, and for me I, I don't cut this right off Okay. Uh, this is not on this side, just <laughs> kind of down, and so you'll actually lose some of the meat. So I leave it connected. You can see that, and I cut the tail. So my knife is pretty sharp, and you got to watch where your thumb is yeah. because I like to keep my thumb, you know. <laughs> and and so you uh, run it down the backbone. So there's some. Um, the bones are just kind of kept in there. You can hear that sound. Yeah. <laughs> so, and this is also how they fillet them so that they're ready for the smokehouse. This is the same, very same way. So I could go like this. <laughs> That's pretty fast, but so I'm going to put that in here. So then we have a whole filleted fish. And so if I'm barbecuing, I have my barbecue uh, on, we barbecue it like that. And of course, we'll wash it and I like to marinate it. But now the bones are out because for me, um, yeah, okay, you can jar the bones and it's good for calcium, but I'd, I'd rather just take uh, some calcium pills <laughs> and cut the bones out. Now, I don't expect you to be perfect because. I've been doing this for a long time, and uh, you can kind of do it in your sleep uh, after a while. So you end up with a fillet that we're going to wash because that affects the flavor of your cabin. Mm -hmm. So there's no um, freezer burn on this one at all, and uh, and it's because it was frozen properly and stored. And these free and so well, what I do with the bones and the skeleton, elders would be mad if I didn't cook the head up. But we have a few resident eagles down on our beach, and I take the carcasses down there, and and we uh, we do that. So I'm going to put these guys in here. How are you feeling about cutting fish? I'm 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 willing to give it a go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, that's good. Well, you know what? It's it's going to be okay, and if you get stuck, that's fine. Okay. So. Here we have a nice um, male sockeye. I'm actually going to let you use this because we got a okay. mess going on here. Because you're righty, you might want to. I'm so righty. You can use that knife or this one. Doesn't matter. I'll try. The, I'll start with this one because okay. it's smaller. Right. <laughs> so if, if our, our 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 friends that are watching are wanting to cut fish, this is where you're going to be at right now. So we'll start under under the gills. Yeah. So you and take, it goes under under this. Yeah. Thing? So take that your finger there and then just cut. Yeah. I'm gonna keep my fingers away from there. Yeah. Right perfect. there. And then I usually cut a piece of the tail right here. Yeah. Okay. And then turn your knife because now the bones go like this. They follow the the. So just take go down. um, just to the right of this. From the back there. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And then make your make your little cut. That's perfect. You can feel the bones probably there. Yeah. Right on. That's perfect. And then go right up to here. And just in like a an inch. -ish? Yeah, just an inch thing. And then you can get your hand kind of in there. Good for you. That's perfect. Holy, you said you never did this before. <laughs> <laughs> never. Oh, well, you're good. All right. So now uh, you can see the bone. You're, you're nice and close there. So now you can just start taking your knife. You know, watch your thumb. Yeah. But, you can start cutting down and then kind of going along. Can yeah. I go? Can I cut that way? You can cut that way. Anyway. <laughs> I'm a lefty, so uh, yeah, it's a little bit different. Yeah, there, there you go. And you can hear it kind of riding yeah. along the bones there. Like you, you, you could probably do it in one go when I yeah, might okay. little by little. Well, you're kind of learning and then um, just kind of feel the the bones in there so oh, you know yeah. you're not losing meat. I don't want to lose too much meat. Yeah. 
That's okay. Because we're jarring this fish, we can we can cut the scraps and use them for fillers in there after we um I can hear them. Yeah. I don't know. What do you think? Did, is that a lot of loss? Yeah, that's a little loss there, but maybe I'll do half. <laughs> okay, we can do half. Good for you, though. That's All a right. good start. That's a, that's a fillet. So I'll just keep keep working my way down. Yeah, and so you just kind of turn the knife in there and get or just watch your fingers. That's all. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Well. All right. Yeah, and then you could just kind of open it. Because that's a meat that I could have kept, yeah, right? Yeah, that's okay. But we're gonna cut that off and we're okay. gonna wash it and use it for. Um, yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, good. So when you get down that low, just leave that fillet on there. The fillet? Okay. And then we'll turn it over. Because then it gives it the body. Uh, it gives it the body right. to, um, yeah, so it's nice and. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, leave, I'll okay. let you uh, okay. finish that one. <laughs> How'd that feel? Felt good. Okay. It's definitely a lot, a lot trickier than than watching you just yeah. smooth through there. And you can also some people go like this, and then they once they get um, yeah. So you end up with a nice fillet there. We'll put that in there. So we're going to give these a good wash because we got a bloody mess here, and that's just all part of. Mm -hmm. Okay. And through the magic of um, tanning, uh, you won't see the bad cuts. So there, there you go. go. <laughs> and it's not that it was a bad cut. So I'm just going to stick this over here. Daniel. So we have some. Uh, some mess here that I'll uh, take, and then we're going to wash these fillets. And it's important that we'll um, maybe I'll get you to wash this up while I rinse the fillets off. Sounds good. Is that yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So it's a good time for you to, if you're if you've been following along, your you salmon uh, to to wash your fillets because if they're not washed clean, it it has a strong flavor to your fish, and you don't want that. Am I just using the, the rag here? Yeah, just use the rag. It's good. Just wipe it off. We're going to come back to the, the cutting board anyway. It's a Zoom. They're can Daniel, can you hear me, Daniel? Okay. <laughs> well, it's okay. We got clean. <laughs> there <we> go. <laughs> Do a little more here. Yeah. So, our our um, our friends that are on online here and they're looking to learn how to can. We have jars um, that we we bought. And these are like one or two person portions. So, we're gonna actually we'll use your knife because it's clean, and I'll cut the box. It's Oh yes, this one. Yeah, we'll cut the box with this. So what we did ahead of time here is um, we have a, a dishwasher where we wash uh, all these jars. Even though they come and they look like they're clean, uh, there's a chance of, we don't know. We don't know if there's bacteria, you know, if it's clean or whatever. So we always wash them, even our ancestors my grandparents, they always wash the jars. So we take them and take the rings off. 
get them soaking. Yeah. I have a question about the lids. I heard that you can't reuse the lid. True. Okay. Yeah. And that's the seal and the. the yeah, top? like these little uh, rubber. Um, these the rubber. Uh, they're soft, so you mm -hmm. got to warm them up in water, and when they seal down and suck down, they hear a little pop sound. Yeah. And then, but when you get them off, you, you can't save it because you've got to break it off. But then. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, there you can buy uh, you can buy these lids, um, and you just keep reusing the jars. Great. Yeah. So sometimes, if you're if you're not sure how big your um, your jars and your fish you got to cut, there's a little trick, and I don't know. We learned this. I don't remember when, but I take um, well, this is a base cell, but it's just a plastic lid. And I cut it so that it's just underneath the, the, the top of the, because you don't want your fish uh, right up to the top. You want a little bit of space. Mm -hmm. And what happens with that is it, because sometimes it won't allow it to seal properly. So, so we have that. Well, that's a good enough thing. All right. Time for a drink. So we have some nicely washed fillets. Historically, I think um, our people used uh, horse horse tails, and it's a plant that's it's actually quite it feels abrasive, mm -hmm. but that that's how they deslimed the fish. It's pretty cool. I was like, wow, and there's medicine in that. So when I'm thinking about jars, I'm going to get another uh, tote. Maybe I'll set it here and then we'll cut them and put them in there. Perfect. And then mm -hmm. uh, we'll get the jars out of the dishwasher in a minute. Okay. okay. So I use this. This is uh, a lifesaver. You just don't want to keep trimming the plastic because it'll get in the food. <laughs> And that's what's going to go in the jar. So we'll keep them like this. But some of these are short, so um, we have uh, like a pile of that we just add to it later on. Yeah. So just good. Now, do you want to try your hand at cutting the, some fish up? Sure. Okay. So you just, oh, it'll be probably right-handed for you yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay you know it's hard lefties and righties it's the opposite that's for sure so we're doing one fillet per jar you have one fillet per jar and um yeah and they don't always come out to the exact um size I can do another one. You yeah. got to do them. <laughs> okay, perfect. <laughs> there we go. Oh, man. How are those knives still holding up an edge? Oh yeah, yours. Yours is a that's a great knife. <laughs> yeah, it's. A... I did just want to mention to everyone, um, you can see in the back there, there's this lovely poster. It's by artist Sarah Jim. And um, the meaning of it is Indigenous food justice. And so you can find um, Sarah Jim, more about her, I think Sarah Jim Studio on Facebook or Instagram. Good job. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so we're going to warm up these lids. Um, I have them in uh, water and they're getting ready to boil. Okay. And part of what we do too is we need uh, salt in them. So it's like with this amount of fish in a jar, it's like one quarter of a teaspoon. That's it. Whoops. There we go. So with bigger jars, 
it would be yeah. a little bit more salt. Yeah, like the, the pints that we sometimes put fish in, uh, I'll put a whole teaspoon of sugar or okay. salt in. Okay. And, uh, so yeah, so there are a few bones in here, but you know, when the, when it's all nicely done and so we take this meat and we'll um, put it on the skin on the inside so the jar looks wonderful, mm -hmm. looks like that. Mm -hmm. And the bones soften during, they do, during yeah. the canning process. I right? know if, if somebody does uh, like all bones, they said they put in vinegar, but I think vinegar uh, takes away from, uh, you know, it might dilute some of the nutrients. Mm -hmm. So I, I never ever put uh, vinegar into the, the canned meat. Okay. So we're going to start putting some of these in here and some of them we're just going to go like this and if it's too big we're just going to take and slice a little bit off here and I like to just cut them up a little bit like this okay and then what happens is now they can uh, fit in there better and one of the big problems with jar and fish is it's if they miss this step here and when you put the fish in, the top part gets little bits of fish on there mm -hmm. and it won't seal properly. So we have these claws here and I'll, I'll get them down. We'll do them after, but we'll wipe them down so there's nothing on them. Mm -hmm. And then the, then the lids go on. Okay. So let's try and put some of these guys in jars. Great. You, yeah, and you can maybe just bring those. Grab this knife here. Yeah, you bet. You go. And you got a cutting board over there. I got the okay. cutting board. Yeah, so some of these little slivers I save so they 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 fit in. So like this one here will be pretty small. I'll add some more parts to it. Like that. So that's a that's, that's enough space at the that's top. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Great. Perfect. Well, that just looks wonderful in a jar like that. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I feel, I feel um, upset watching what's happening with our salmon industry and the salmon in the streams. And uh, when, I, when I left the industry in 1998, there was a thousand saners. And there's 97 now. And there's still... So the, what the fishermen have been catching uh, all these years later, there's, there's hardly any boats and there's still a problem. Mm -hmm. you know, there's about 11 factors with salmon, you know, mm -hmm. from everything from drift netters to uh, the water temperature up the Fraser, um, you know, our pollution that's going in there. There's so many factors that uh, we need to look after our fish. Mm -hmm. And so I, I have, uh, you know, my concerns and I feel uh, awesome that we have a chance to, uh, to even jar some fish up today because it's such a it's such an important part of our ecosystem part of our culture you know dried fish um, smoked fish and barbecue and jar mm -hmm. that you know and if there's if there's not enough to go around or there's not enough to to, to reproduce it's uh it's like wow that's what you know what's happening so so today for us to have a chance to cut up some fish and it feels pretty good. It does, uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, Daniel, can you hear me? Yep. Okay, so did you use one fish? These are two fish. Okay. Okay. And about how many jars will you get? Um, this one was, um, it's about a case and a half of these uh, 250 mil. Okay. Awesome. So that's, um, you know, so they go quite a ways and uh, uh, it's a the, case no. and a half of these uh, 250 mil. Okay. Awesome. So that's... Uh, yeah. And, you know, and after you get, um, these are like two person portions or one if you're really hungry 
I mean, if I if I smoke this, light smoke it and can it, that'll be just mine. It won't be anybody's. <laughs> yeah. That'd be good. Yeah, it's, and lots of people use the 250 or half pints for fish, and that's a really nice size for, um, you know, for making uh, little bigger portions. Mm -hmm. Or if you're making, um, let's say, uh, a big batch and you have the pints for your whole family or a gathering. Yeah, that's. So for, for today, we're just using these smaller ones just because it's. It'll be nice just for portions and, and you don't waste anything. Yes. And if any participants have questions at all, please ask them in the chat on in the Zoom function or on Facebook Live as well. And I'll uh, relay those to Daniel and Jesse. You know, and our, our fish is so important to us when I, um, in 2004, my uh, father passed away, and he showed us so much around fishing. And, and we got a call from our, our band said, there's food fish ready. And it was like, we just finished the viewing uh, at the funeral home, and we all looked at each other, and we we're like, well, what would dad do? And hmm. he said, well, he'd go get fish. <laughs> so we all, we all went out, and I think we got 30 or 40 sockeye, which was amazing. And, um, but just to have that kind of thinking that, you know, even at that time, you know, fish is ready and it doesn't wait for anybody. Uh, we went and, we went and got our food fish. So that was, yeah. uh, that was pretty cool. So we did lots of jarring and freezing and, you know, well, we have some more jars here. Too. Oh, good. So hopefully that'll be just enough. I rested a living from the sea, uh, as I said before, 25 years I commercial fished and my family came out with me the last 10 years and so my kids grew up on the boat. Um, my wife came out and worked with me and, and she in the winters working her dental and, and you know, it was just such a, an amazing lifestyle to be out on the water and, and through the elements and, and it was very dangerous, there's no question about it was actually on two boats that sank. Wow. I can't say I drowned when I'm here. <laughs> but you know, it, it's like what, what people have done and what they do to, to rest a living from the sea. And uh, so I really value when I have a chance to get some salmon or some fish or, and this year it doesn't look like very, uh, very good opportunity for food fish for our communities. And so a lot of people that are just going out on their own to catch them. Mm -hmm. So it feels, um, you know, uh, I feel lonely in the sense of that we're, we're not able to provide that for our communities. So. Mm -hmm. Hey, Daniel, I have a couple questions here. Okay. So can you remind me again how much salt you put in the jar? I use a, a quarter of a teaspoon for 250 mils. Okay. Okay. And is there any reason to do the skin inward or outward or does it just, is it preference? Uh, it's preference, but um, it's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> it looks the best when the skin side in. And uh, so you just see all this wonderful meat you have there. But, but sometimes when you do it outside, uh, the skin sticks and it's a lot harder to clean the jar. So... Mm -hmm. I know uh, two years ago now, I did chum salmon jarred and I light smoked them and my wife wasn't able to help me and I did 287 jars, light smoked and jarred myself in one day and I was, I was pretty tuckered. <laughs> it was a lot of work, but you get to, you know, I got to enjoy half part smoked jarred fish and you just could put it on some fresh bread and mm -hmm. it was like the best. It was awesome. Nice. So do you um, freeze the fish with the innards in it, like whole, or? Yeah, actually, they keep better. They found that they keep longer. They don't burn. 
And it, when I was in uh, at UBC and we did a, a workshop in December last no, uh, 2019, um, I had some freezer burnt fish because that's the reality. Because sometimes, you know, you, you throw some fish in the freezer and like, I'll get at it later and it's six months later and you're like, I should do something with this fish. And what happens is they get a little bit of yellow, a little, we call it freezer burn. Mm -hmm. And that's the stuff that just tastes terrible. It turns people off from eating fish. So what we did at UBC, I had, the, I had a fish, we had a, a bit of freezer burn on the outside and I just trimmed it all off, light smoked it over there um, and jarred it and it tasted just like fresh fish. So if you trim it properly, you, you, don't, uh, you don't have that fishy taste. And that's what a lot of people get turned off and go, oh, I don't mm -hmm. like fish. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's strong. So yep. here. There's a couple more here. Yeah, perfect. And then we got a yeah, little, we like a little one some of them or here. maybe that one. Yeah, so we can cut a, some of this stuff up and then some of the jars are a little skinny. So we'll put them in there. <clears throat> and then this is one I like to... Um, yeah. There we go. How's that for a guess? <laughs> <laughs> we have a couple more cases here, but we didn't we didn't use them, and uh, we're gonna have one jar left over. Pretty good. One jar. Oh boy. All right. <laughs> so we come to the point where, um, if I can get you like there's salt in this one, but I'll get you to put a quarter teaspoon of salt in them. Sure. And I'm gonna check the lids. And what you want to do is, oh, so they're boiling now, so that softens the ring. And I think there's mm -hmm. some new jar lids that are coming out that you just warm them or something, but these are the old ones. I know them. Okay. And I could just plop it in, doesn't just have to... Plop it in. Okay. Yeah, because it when you pressure cook it, it, it just goes around the whole uh, piece of the fish. Okay. Well, there should be something here, right here. <laughs> and Daniel, earlier you mentioned that uh, your ancestors would use horsetail to de-slime the fish. Yeah, that was a traditional way of, because they didn't have a lot of running water or whatever, so they, they got rid of the slime that way. Oh, okay, so today did you just did it by washing the fish? Yeah, we just washed them. Okay. And, okay. and so if I'm doing a barbecue or a tubo, we call it on the beach where I split them and I don't have it, I'll, I'll use horsetail to, to wipe the slime off. Okay. And that's a great job. Nice. So, so, I mean, you're reaching into boiling water and that's where I said, I think I had a magnet. And oh. so, it's, you know, I got a couple of magnets here and it's perfect. So these are salted. Yeah, perfect. Oh. In June, we had um, two totes, so it's about 20, 2,200 pounds of sockeye come to uh, the school, and we, we uh, jarred about 750 jars in two days. I was tired. Um, <laughs> I can tell you that. I was on my feet, uh, I think 12 or 14 hours one day and then 10 hours the next. But we had eight people helping. And what was interesting was there was a couple of um, women, I think they were like in their 40s, but their grandparent used to do the jarring with them, uh, passed on and they said they, they feel like they missed a spot in their lives when learning how to do this. So, so what we're doing today here is so vital. And so this is amazing that we can carry it on and then mm -hmm. have, um, have our ways preserved in a way that we can look at them in the future. Mm -hmm. And we, we did a count uh, once. And if you look here, um, it's easy to miss uh, that lid has got two in it. And, and we screw it on. And then they were squirting all over and we thought we ruined a jar. Mm -hmm. But um, so you got to make sure that there's, um, they come apart. So that was one thing that we learned. But you know what, out of the, all those 700 jars that we did, we didn't have not one that didn't take. So I thought we did pretty good. Mm 
<clears throat> so I had I had uh, five propane tanks and three electric stove elements to do all the jarring and yeah. How many pressure canners did you have going? I think we had eight. Wow. Eight going. <laughs> and speaking of which, <laughs> shut that one off. So otherwise it gets kind of hot to fish these out of here, but this is a great way to do it. I'll give you that. Yep. Two. Now I've, I've eaten fish that have been two or even three years in a jar. Mm -hmm. Amazing. It's, it doesn't, uh, but you can't get, uh, you know, 10, 12 months out of really well frozen fish. Um, that's good, eh? One more. one more. That's it. All right. <laughs> I did sterilize this thing. I don't use it much. But it's a handy piece. So like I was saying earlier, like if you if you just do a boil recipe, which we don't do anymore, and we don't promote it, and we um, so I give a half turn like that, and then uh, I'm gonna get let's see, get this one here. Let's just put them in the jar. Here. All right. And it was just just put it on and turn half. Yeah, half just turn, turn until it kind of you can feel it bite on. Okay. And the reason why I wash these guys, even though they're not part of the fish, is you don't know what's been on them, who's touched them. Yeah. So you just kind of keep it clean. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you give it a turn, and you feel a, the rubber bite down. Yeah. And then now they're warm, they'll stick on there good. Daniel, how long can salmon last in the freezer before it goes bad? Ah, uh, you know, uh, you can't get much past a year, even if you look after them really well. Uh, they just, like, Freezing, you know, it delays, it doesn't stop it uh, permanently. Uh, it suspends, and in the freezers, it's actually like a cooking process. You get that freezer burn and it absorbs, uh, and so you lose it. I have a friend, he won't even freeze anything, no, no salmon at all, just because. So we have to, we eat it fresh, or he eats it fresh, and that's okay. That's if you're, if you can do that, that's great, but. So I vacuum pack, I have a vacuum packer, I freeze them. And, uh, but you can also take your fish in. Like we have a few places that will freeze your fish and it'll be like 50 below and you get them frozen vacuum pack and then take them, move them to your own freezer. They'll last a long time. They'll last a while. What about candy salmon? How long would that stay in the freezer? Sorry, which one? Candy salmon? Candy? Candy? Yeah. It lasts. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> eats them so fast. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know actually, you know, because it just never ever makes it um, very far because everybody's after that candy salmon. But because there's more sugar in it and more, um, and it's a, it's a more a drier smoke, It'll last a long time. I have some two-year-old frozen actually candy that's still, but most of the time it never makes it uh, even hardy for the freezer. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so is this, it has a layer at the bottom. Right. So we ha normally you have another lid that you put on there. Mm -hmm. um, but what you do is with these guys is you put them uh, like that. Okay. So you put them in between. Yeah, like that. Okay. So this is uh, maybe, maybe uh, we got one layer plus a little bit. Yeah. And um, yeah, so we have our fish in here. We had our lids warmed up. 
and they're all gummy and it's wonderful or the stick on there. And you know, the, um, the fish actually produces a lot of juice. So there you go. Yeah. So after we get that, you know, you don't fill it right up with water. I was going to uh, ask. But you yeah. don't want it too, too far down. And then on the bottom, there's a barrier mm -hmm. because if the, if the jars right directly to the heat that they could crack. Yeah. So you have it just off and yeah, that's great. Okay. I'm going to put the lid on that thing and And this is a typical pressure canner. This is a typical, this is a big one, but yeah. it's a typical canner. And this one, you know, it, ha it has my um, gauge on here and that's what I use. And this one, it doesn't have that nice rocker there. Mm -hmm. and that one, that one's 10 pounds and it won't go higher. Okay. But this one, if I'm not careful, it'll go right up. So you gotta be careful. And you control that with the heat. Yes, okay. I control this one with the heat. Yeah. Yeah. So I put these down, uh, like you're bolting down the heads on a, on a car, you know, you gotta put mm -hmm. them, uh, let me do two here, two there. And, and I'm gonna leave this one up because we need to see the steam come out first know that it's boiling, knock it down, let it come up to 10 pounds, and then we just mark our time, mark the time. So it takes a little bit. Yeah. Daniel, how much water is in the pressure cooker? It's about a quarter full. Okay. And so how long will this cook for? Um, this will cook for 90 minutes. And yeah. you know, we got a great booklet um, that FNHA put out. Yes. I looked at it and I was like, wow, this thing is like exactly right on. So whoever built this book understood, you know, how, it, how the process is and what needs to happen. Yeah, we have, we have this book available um, for community members. And it's nice because at the back, there's tons of recipes. There's recipes for salmon, mm -hmm. for other fish, for salsa and carrots. Yeah. So it gives you, you know, the proper cooking times and mm -hmm. and all that. And if you follow the instructions, you 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 might you might you probably won't have any issues. Yeah, exactly. And that's uh, that's the whole point. <laughs> and so when we're um, we're talking about um, fish and we're cooking and we're canning fish, um, and we're down there. The last day we did it uh, in June there, um, they fried up. I mean, you're thinking, oh God, another piece of fish, but fry up some fish. And uh, wow, it was uh, awesome to, to kind of take that in and eat it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I started actually, uh, my folks had a little gill netter or troller when I was a kid. So nine months old, I was on the boat. So. <laughs> So I've been around the water, and I, you know, and I have a hard time being away from the water. And, uh, yep. and so when I'm on spare time, I have all these boats I follow because, you know, it's like I could be fishing again or I could be, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this is where you got to kind of be fussy. Um, and you've got to have a timer because you get, Reading a book, you're tired, you forget, you forget about your canner that's going there. And that's very critical mm -hmm. about when you start it, uh, when you start the timing. Mm -hmm. So I won't, we won't start that one for probably another 20 minutes. And uh, it may be even over the, the show that we have. Yeah. But um, this morning I had the luxury of canning some fish up well before, uh, before we started here. And um, yeah, so we have some, I'm gonna take it out and show you what it's gonna look like. Awesome. Yeah. Yes. Well. If it's around four pounds, five pounds, I'll take it off. But okay. If you do it from, a, from full 10 pounds, uh, it could be too much pressure change. Yeah. And you could lose your, um, 
injured a couple of jars that could crack and all that. And you, you took off the heat a little while ago? Yeah, I shut it off uh, about 10 minutes ago. Okay. Heat. Yeah. So it could depressurize, get the temperature down. Yeah, yeah. that's it. So with that, it's um, it's so safe because they're they're built. They have in they're built uh, like this has an emergency pressure relief valve. So if you forget it, it's gonna blow that little thing off. So people are like, oh my god, pressure cooker. It's scary. It's dangerous. But these ones are tapered fit. They're they're bulletproof really. Mm -hmm. And and you know when you're getting uh, your your fish up to 240 degrees in a jar that's liquid versus uh, 100 Celsius or 212 boiling, mm -hmm. uh, you got a way more heat. So that's that's the benefit of pressure cookers. Uh, and then, but it's just uh, 90 minutes. But in the water bath, it used to be three hours. I don't know if anybody remembers doing a water bath fish, but you got to boil up for three hours. Talk about watching the clock. Yes. Yeah. 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 And even with the water bath at three hours, does that kill everything? Uh, that's that's been the issue because yeah. people have gotten sick from that. Yeah. Because it's not been, um, it's not guaranteed. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of people lived and lived their lives. Yeah. Water bathing their their fish, but you know it's a long time, hours and this hours. This just adds a more security yeah. to killing things like like botulism. Yes, and, all those and all that stuff. Rare, but but serious. Yeah. So when that when that finishes uh, decompressing here, I usually do it three or four pounds, and then I'll take the you let it shut the fire off, let it cool down a bit, mm -hmm. and it starts to drop. And then uh, like now I'll take the take it off and yeah. uh, because it's still a lot of pressure in there. And oh good, I got this. We'll. Uh, but you know, having said that. Um, I've had some uh, experiences where I've seen um, thousands of salmon even coming into my net and I can still uh, had like knee tremblers. I was just like, oh my God, the fish yes. are coming. Because I had a big seine net, it's a long net. Yeah. And it was quite a, a beautiful wild industry. And mm -hmm. and I think, I think commercial fishing saved a lot of our indigenous people's lives because it was hard for them to get jobs sometimes, but Fishing was uh, an equalizer, mm -hmm. so they got boats. They got to get out there on the water and and compete like anybody else. And so I think uh, that was. Uh, so I have a couple of friends that I worked for, and they actually one fellow, um, one of my former bosses, uh, he survived St. Michael's Residential School, mm -hmm. uh, went through a tough time, found a spiritual walk, and he ended up. I don't know. He's he's probably worth I don't know fifty million dollars, ten boats, and uh, it's just an amazing story. But it's all with fishing, all herring and salmon, and yeah. So it's uh, there's a beautiful lifestyle, and I and I'm hoping and praying that somehow we can still do it. You know, up the rivers, the wind dried fish that we can get, but mm -hmm. jarring fish, man, you feel like you're rich, and you are because you have a big cupboard full of, you know. Some yeah. fishermen I know they have like 10, 20 cases yeah. of fish, and they're like, okay. But you know, gifts, you give it away, it's about abundance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to get um, some gloves here. So this is not the pressure cooker that we just put together, <laughs> just so you know. <laughs> this was this morning's, uh, we, we, I did this. And this was on at around just after 10. So we're, um, it was around 10.30. So um, been an hour or over, just over 90 minutes. Mm -hmm. And so, so we're down to, um, we're down to zero here now. This is kind of done so we can crack these now. And if you, if you go, if you go over time, it's okay. 20 minutes, 30 minutes, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we try and keep it, but it just uh, cooks a little longer. Yeah. And, um, oh, got one more here. Woohoo. 
So I'm going to put uh, some of these towel, this towel down here. Okay. There's another one, a gray this one in there. We'll get them out. We'll get them. Oh, yeah. And I lost these this morning, so I had to dig, run around and find them. So here we have, uh, you see what happens when you put the skin inside? Mm -hmm. It's this beautiful, you just see salmon. And you think, where did all that water come from? But it comes out of the, yeah. the, the moisture of the, of the fish. Okay. Give Daniel, them a few. Is using a pressure counter harder on the jaw, j j the jars? No, I don't think so. I mean, they're, they're tough and uh, you know, I, I don't, I haven't ever noticed from water baths to, to pressure cookers. And the only thing I know about uh, some people don't have the nice dishwashers. And, and so they, they put them in their oven mm -hmm. and they heat the jars up. And I think they can become brittle with that kind of heat. Cause that's like, you know, 300 or 350 or whatever they're doing it at. Because and these ones, yeah. go ahead. Uh, you said so about 90 minutes what yep. time do you start when do you start counting the time so we start the, the start uh, of the time is once i put the uh i see steam coming out of um this one here so i see steam coming out of this character mm -hmm. and then uh there's uh, five ten and fifteen pounds we don't want 15 because that's, but I put the 10 pounds on, mm -hmm. I let it build up. And, uh, and then this one, as you heard it before, we're kind of rocking a bit. Yeah. It's letting yeah. it out after 10. So it's like 12, 13 pounds. So it's trying to dump it out. Yeah. Yeah. And that's all. So I don't, I have to pay less. Of, and that is, that's a really good salmon candy, this one. Yeah. yeah so. So once it's reached its desired pressure, then you start the nine minutes. Um, once you once it uh, once it starts spouting out, that's you've reached the desired. Uh, well, it's boiling, and then I can put the and then I put the pressure on. Now, did you hear that? Yeah. That's magic sound. That little. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the uh, you can see where it, these are convex right now, mm -hmm. and then they concave or they seal. And yeah. so there's a negative uh, pressure, yeah, the, in this, so there's no air in there. Yeah. That's the whole point of, uh, of doing it this way. That looks beautiful. And I have a question. So when, when the pressure is right and there's, there's steam coming out of um, that little spout, you can you modify the temperature on the stove yeah. a little bit kind of so to kind of keep it much. even. Yeah. Yeah, it's not okay. rocking too much. So the one that we just did the last batch, I'll have to really watch closely because gas fires is, you know, it's pretty hot. Is there anything to look out for, for a batch that wouldn't turn out? I know before you mentioned that, you know, if there's two lids on it, that can mess it up a bit, but is there anything else? No, I mean, we're, you're looking for, um, oh, I don't know, you just heard that one there. Mm -hmm. There's another one that popped down. Uh, yeah, this one popped down. So you're just looking for all the lids to make that little pop sound. Yeah, okay. And then they're good? And they're That's good. Oh, awesome. <laughs> and actually, uh, uh, once they're cooled down, uh, Harley, you can take the rings off. Okay. Yeah. And use them somewhere else because that that sticky lid is stuck on there now mm -hmm. and uh yeah so we so have let's um, know what brand the canner is okay. what 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 brand is that uh i think this is american good question we just got this one this is for our health centers and Mm. All American. I knew it was All something American. American. All American. <laughs> Sounds like apple pie and 
but yeah, they make good canners. And, and some of these are cast, like these are cast aluminum and then mm -hmm. spun out. So they're uh, really well made. So the, there's a, once you do this, that you just want to hear that crack, that sound of them popping down. Yeah. Awesome. Earlier you mentioned that you've ate canned salmon two, three years after it's been canned. Yep. Yeah, um, they last. That's that's the benefit of jarring fish too. Is it it lasts a long time on your shelves, and uh, and you can trust that it's it's good. <clears throat> now, if by chance your fish turns or something, it'll just bubble up. You'll see the can kind of bulge because mm -hmm. it's you know, and then we won't you won't eat it. You'll get rid of it, dump it out. Yeah, you can hear that now. <laughs> That's a great sound. So this is about a case and a half for those two fish. And uh, and, and sometimes, you know, if you have a lot of fish to do and you're just running them through, running them through, I have little, um, we use these stickers here. <laughs> And and we just write the time on them, stick it on the on the handle there. Mm -hmm. So so at um, two thirty, that batch would be ready. You know. So otherwise, you know, you kind of get oh, when did I put that on again? And um, if you're doing multiple batches, do you have to let this cool down and then re, no. re can you reuse the water? We reuse as the well water and, and just add to it. That's nice. Yeah. To save to save time. Unless a jar breaks or something happens. Yeah. But I, when I was younger, I broke a jar because I'm taking them out in a hurry. Mm -hmm. I just banged it on there. <laughs> like, <laughs> all that nice thing. Yeah. Yeah. Daniel, can you do any of this with an Instant Pot? With an Instant Pot? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. No. Uh, and, I, and I think uh, some of these Instant Pots, you can't get the pressure up like you want and it's hard to get the heat in there. So I, I think you're playing with your health if you're um, not using a really good pressure cooker. Okay. And so, so I know that all these are, you guys are gonna enjoy because they're yours. <laughs> <laughs> How many rows of jars can you fit in the counter at once? Uh, this one I could probably do one, two, I could do three and then maybe a couple on top because it's a dome. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I could probably do like three and a half. That other one, I could probably do five rows of these little ones. Wow. Yeah. So it's, um, I think it's like eight, nine, nine jars of the quartz I had in my big one there. And that's a lot of fish though, mm -hmm. too. Yeah. It's, so. You can fill it up to the top with with the the cans, but still only use the same only amount you, of yeah. water. Okay. Yeah, because yeah. the, the pressure and the and the heat is what cooks it. Yeah. And it's wet in there. It's yes. a wet bath. So. Yeah. Yeah. So this one is done for today. I just let it cool, and we'll dump it out and clean it, and that's okay. So mm -hmm. I'll be happy with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any day that I, I have a chance to jar a fish, I always feel good. It's a good. It's a high day. To me, this is this is our well. This is our Taylor. This is our you know. I mean, lots of this was traded and and yeah, we we did one where we had a community um, during during COVID here. We had a our seven hundred jars went out to the community mm -hmm. and uh, I was like, wow, <laughs> it was a lot. Yeah. So out of all of that, I did get a basket of food and I got one jar. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. I, I have, um, I'm still connected to the industry. I have lots of friends, so I get my, sh and I'm very fortunate to have the fish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So now there's no bones in there, except for some of the pin bones in there, nothing. It'll, it'll be good. Mm -hmm. And uh, you could just put that with a bit of mayonnaise um, on, and then have it with some green onions or something, and then put it on your toast. and. You got a great meal, yeah. Are they ready to eat now? You could eat them totally right okay. now. 
Well, we're not going to do that. No, we'll yeah. wait. We'll wait. wait but that's later. why we have uh, some fresh stuff, and I'll cook those up in a little bit here. Yes. But, uh, yeah. So we can hear that that magic sound, the popping. Is it? Yeah, can you also you know, it's see just, it? It's a really comforting sound to hear. It's like you know that you've done something correct and right, and it's working good. Mm -hmm. And it wakes. She goes. She snaps. Yeah. Yeah. Can you also see it? Like, does it pop up? Yeah, there's a a little tiny uh, with these lids here. Um, let's I'll find this one here, and uh, maybe I'll I don't know if you can zoom in there, but you can see uh, there's a little tiny con concave little part to that, mm -hmm. and I know that that one's sealed down. Before we just look for the whole thing to buckle down, but they set it up so I guess it's thinner metal or something, but that center center mm -hmm. comes down in these lids. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So all of these. So I would just take uh, a cloth now and we just give that a bit of a wipe when it cools a bit more. Yeah. And uh, you're going to, and uh, yeah, it's going to be beautiful. <laughs> and then we keep the boxes. Keep the boxes so that, um, let's go like this. And see, I mean, they're cool enough to touch already. Mm -hmm. The gloves on. And they can cool off and they're safe and they're protected in there. And I got two in here. Perfect. And that is one little case of 250 mil sockeye. Cool. Great. Nice job. <laughs> no gloves. <laughs> no gloves. Okay. I'm taking mine off. Hang on. Um, I'd, I'd like to share actually that we we have a canning program with FNHA and we have some can some pressure canners available for the communities and it's kind of like a, you can borrow it or if there's oh, an nice. event you can borrow them sometimes there's more than one sometimes there isn't but if anybody is interested in in using a pressure canner wow. um, you can uh, give your health center a call and to contact your local uh, your local health officer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's a great program because I, you know, I, I hear people looking all the time in the grad sales for a canner, but mm -hmm. you don't know what condition they're in. And some of them have the old O-ring, rubber rings, and they get brittle or whatever, mm -hmm. and then they lose their ability to create pressure. Yeah. And so it's it's good to have, and then they're they're expensive to have the big ones, the new ones. These guys are mm -hmm. they're not cheap at all. Yeah. And, but it, you you have to have it if you want to do pressure canning. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I would do I would jar pinks, uh, coho, um, sockeye, springs. It doesn't matter. They're all good when mm -hmm. you jar them like this. Mm -hmm. This is fantastic. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Before people um, start exiting, I, I did want to mention our survey that we had, and I will attach the link right now. Uh, let me find it. But if you could just, I will post it on the chat here, and then I will also make sure that it's on Facebook. If you could take a couple minutes to fill out our um, the survey mm. that we have, it would mean a lot to us. Um, so I will send that right now. And then two, I just wanted to extend my gratitude to Daniel and Jesse. Um, and there was, we have a ton of comments here of many participants um, just commenting on how wonderful of workshop this was. And um, so thank you both very, very much. It was amazing. And um, is there any final thoughts that you wanted to share? Go ahead if you want to say something. I just want to say thank you, and I, I, I'm looking forward to more fish filleting and fish canning in the future. Right. Yeah. I'd really like to uh, take this back home because my mom is a she's a a summer berry canner. We we haven't done something like this yet, so mm. I'm really happy to take this back to back home and and utilize it. Awesome. Thank yeah. you. Well, this is our way, really. I mean, we can, we can, we can tell people, and you know, we can show them in manuals. But when you do it with your hands, 
it's our elders way of, of, of teaching is you do it kinesthetically, you do it with your hands. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I was honored to have a chance to do that. You know, I, I feel, um, I feel honored that I was asked by uh, FNHA and the team uh, for FNHA wellness. And uh, so hopefully, uh, yeah, you guys enjoy this fish and uh, think about, uh, well, we call this, my granny used to call it medicine food. And uh, it is, it mm -hmm. is, it's, it's not just nutritious for us, but it's, it's, it's part of our connection to um, our environment, nature, and that's just a well jarred fish. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So I say hi, Chuck, to CM. Thank, uh, you. thank you for all our viewers. Rita, Pomut, Pomut, Pomut. I see you there, and uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for watching. <laughs> thank you. Oh, and Harley, Thanks. thank you for being a great moderator. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna start to pan fried some fresh coho. Uh, and I'm sorry that our viewers can't. We want to keep that away from you because it looks too good to eat. <laughs> so yeah, so thank you so much, and uh, Larissa and the team here. Thank you so much. Good job for uh, making it easy for us. And um, yeah, I just wanted to mention again, thank you, uh, Daniel and Jesse. I've posted the link uh, to the survey in our chat. And we, so this is part three of nine of the Promoting Resiliency webinar series. And so our next one is going to be on September 3rd. And it's with Robin Edgar and Jerry Oldman. And they're gonna be talking about traditional medicine and herbs for lung health. So that's gonna be a really good one. Um, it'll be the same way on Zoom and Facebook Live. And um, that's it. Please don't forget to fill out the survey and thank you so much. And thank you to the audience too. We had some really amazing questions and just for everyone for participating, um, it's, it's awesome. So thank you. Thank you.